sometimes the best quilts are the simplest quilts. About a year and a half ago, I started making some four and a half inch half square triangle. Random color on one side and low volume fabrics on the other side. After I made my scrap wall of fame, I got inspired to finish all of those half square triangles. Enough talking already. Let me show you the process. There are several ways that you can make half square triangles. Since I was using a lot of scraps, I made a template out of the size that I needed. That just made it a lot easier when I was coming across some scraps that I wasn't sure if it was going to fit or not. Let me show you what I mean. Here was a bin of some low volume fabrics, mostly white and whatnot. So I came across this white piece right here. I simply would just take this template, I would have it close by, I would measure to see if I could get a half square triangle out of it and which way made the best sense to save on fabric. This way seems to be like that would work. So I would set that aside. I would grab this random piece right here, my template, lay it on top, and yeah, I think that totally is going to work. I did give myself a little bit of wiggle room and made this just a hair bigger than what I actually needed, just so I wasn't shy in any of my half square triangles. I'm gonna be able to get a couple out of that, actually. This one, you know it's gonna work. It's big enough. This one, I already have a pile started right here of low volume. Lay your template down, grab your straight edge ruler, and I would put that in the pile. I took my five and a half inch square ruler, would lay it down. If it was smaller than this ruler, I still knew that it was going to work. After I have my square, I right away would just trim that right in half and I would use both of those. I did use a lot of the same low volume print in my half square triangles, so there are a lot that are the same. When it came to my colored fabrics, I didn't want any duplicates. I don't know why, it's just a thing I have. I don't like duplicates in my quilt, if it's scrappy. The next step was to just give these a quick hot press. This looked like a good sewing session right here as far as the quantity that I was going to do in that particular sewing session because I would do these in small batches. I would set these down and then I would work on one color. Since I'm going to be placing my half square triangles in color order, I sort of did them in batches like that. I would do a bunch of yellows and then a bunch of reds and blues and so on. Today, I'm going to work on some purples. Now is the time where I pull from my scrap wall of fame. Purple. <laughs> I'm going to follow the same rule that I did when I did the low volumes. I'm going to keep this handy and use this for those odd shaped scraps. This one I know is going to fit. I think there was a couple that I did already and shoved back in there. That one's gonna fit. This one needs to be cut. This back. take these purples and we'll give them a press as well. Now I just pair up the two fabrics together, the low volume and the color. And I'll set these aside for the next session. Typically I'll have a much larger stack than this right here. This is just a short sampling of what I normally do. I have stacked them in a way that's efficient for my particular sewing style. I'll be able to just grab the one on the top and slide it over and chain piece these together. Now it's time to cut these threads. This little thing is handy. It came in one of the advent boxes I got for Christmas for quilting. I have them laying all with the dark sides up, the colored sides. I just sort of go over all of them, setting the seam, and then lift up the darker, and then press. I am pressing to the dark side on this particular quilt. Now it's time to trim up these half square triangles. There's a couple of things that I do to help me along in my half square triangles. Cutting mat that turns. Not only do I have my four and a half down here that I'm going to utilize, I have my four and a half right here that I marked off with some washi tape. 
Let me show you why I put this mark right here on my roller. A couple years ago now, one of my subscribers taught me this technique. I so dislike trimming down half square triangles. She told me to fold it in half. When you line up your diagonal, you're going to line it up on your seam right there. I'm lining up here and I know I want four and a half. I want to make sure that I'm within that parameter of four and a half. The first thing I'm going to do is cut this, turn, Now this is why I have the mark on here. So I don't have to move my fabric at all. I am going to pull this down like so. Here is where I want my mark to be, right within where that washi tape is. And I'm going to line up the diagonal, turn, and there you have a perfect half square triangle at four and a half inches if I were to measure it up. It is perfect. So you're going to take your half square triangle, fold it in half, and it's best to fold it on the side where you can see as well. Line everything up, making sure that you have, for sure, a four and a half inch. Pull this down. Make sure you hold down firmly though, because you don't want anything to shift perfect every time. All of these together, these nine pieces, make up one quilt block. So here's the color order that I decided on right here. Red, pink, orange, yellow, green, green, blue, blue, green, blue or indigo, and purple. The first thing that I do is take the red, the pink, and the orange, and I sew them together as one row. And you can see there, I have quite a stack of those. Then I took the yellow, the green, and the green blue, and I sewed those as one row. Next, the blue green, the blue or the indigo, and the purple or violet. The reason why I'm sewing them in strips like this first is because I'm going to shift these rows up a little bit, and I'll show you that here soon. This right here is a cheat sheet that I made up. Because I get confused sometimes at where I'm at in the process when it comes to all these different colors, I sometimes need to look at something like this. Oh yeah, it's red, pink, orange. Oh yeah, it goes yellow, green, and then that green, blue. Because I do get aqua and turquoise always mixed up. So I have to really keep that in order if I want to make sure to keep the integrity of my color order. Let's get some of these rows all you sewn up. You see here where I've taken these rows and sewn them together in the color order that I discussed earlier. I'm going to set this quilt up with that color order that we discussed, and then I'm going to switch it in the next block so the yellow row is on top first, then the blue-green, and then the red. In the next block, it'll be the blue-green first, the red, and then the yellow. These three blocks are the main blocks in this quilt, as far as color is concerned. So we need a bunch of blocks that look like that, that, and that. <laughs> and here I've kind of previewed how I might see the next block and the next block. You can grab randomly if you like, but I tend to want to look ahead just a little bit just to make sure that these two aren't so similar. Because they are right next to each other on the color wheel, they tend to be really close. And that's the hardest color for me, like I said before. I just wanna make sure that I don't have like two dots next to each other or two checkerboards or whatnot. So I just want you to take note here too, that if you even started here in this row across, even though it starts with the blue green, it'll go blue green, blue, purple, and then the color wheel starts over again. Red, pink, orange, yellow, green, green, blue, blue, green, indigo. Even though I've shifted the rows of color, they will still maintain their color in order. The next step is to sew up a bunch of these blocks right The outcome here. of your end result block will depend on how fat your seam allowance was or how slim your seam allowance was. So mine ended up being 12 and a half inches and I didn't trim anything, although I probably 
can trim some of these stragglers right here. You can see here I was shy a little bit. So I may have to hide that within the seam allowance. You know, what can I say? I'm not perfect. 